Hello, this is Robbie Sko. In this video, I'll give you a demo of how to change the global tempo and time signature in Ableton Live's session view, just by renaming scenes. And this can be very helpful for if you're on the stage and want to mix things up on the fly, or even a very fun and efficient production technique for use in the studio. All right, just as a disclosure, I'm gonna be going through these concepts through the lens of eventually expanding upon these types of concepts using the control script CliffX Pro, which can really add to the complexity and capabilities of Ableton as a whole. I won't go fully into what that means in this video, but I will expand upon that in future videos. So consider subscribing if you're interested to see some of the wild creative possibilities that are out there. Also, as I get started, I'm just going to give a brief introduction to the session view and audio and MIDI clips in Ableton. So if that's something that's very familiar to you, feel free to skip ahead to the timestamps that I have listed. All right, let's dive in. So up here we have Ableton's arrangement view. This resembles the workflow of many other digital audio workstations, DAWs like Pro Tools or Logic where you create music linearly, moving from left to right. Yeah, for today's demo, we'll be working in session view in Ableton, which looks like this, and allows you to formulate ideas more cyclically using what are called clips. And you can think of clips as little packets of audio or MIDI, and they could be as short as one-shot samples, or as long as, you know, repeating phrases. And simply clicking the playhead gets the clip to play and loop if the loop button is enabled. So we have that loop button enabled here. Without it, it would just play through the cycle once. And notice as I play different clips while others are playing, Ableton waits for the downbeat of one of the next measure to start the next clip. Clips will all launch and sync according to the global quantization, which is currently set to one bar up here by the metronome. Yeah, so even though I clicked around beat three, it's gonna kind of wait for the next one there. Now here in session view, a row of clips is known as a scene. And the rightmost column is the master track. And by clicking the scene launch buttons below, you can start and stop different scenes. So for example, clicking here, all of the clips within that scene will start playing. And just like with the clips by themselves, the scenes are set to the global quantization of one bar as well. Now, another great feature of Session View is that even by simply renaming a particular scene to, let's say, for instance, 100, and the letters BPM for beats per minute, upon playing the scene after that, it's going to change the global tempo to 100 beats per minute. All right, so we could, for example, have two different scenes at different tempos. We'll set this one to 120, and switching between them, we'll have those different tempos. And now when switching back and forth, notice that Ableton will still wait for the downbeat of one since that's the global quantization. And when I click on the quantization here, you'll see that there are a number of other options. And you know, when I'm looping with multiple instruments, I will sometimes set this quantization a little bit higher. If I have to, for example, go grab a guitar or bass or run over to the drum set, then I will have a higher quantization so I have time to kind of run over to my new instrument. But yeah, we'll talk about those use cases for different settings down the road. And in addition to tempo with this renaming of the scene names, you can also rename it to give a different time signature. So for example, if I named this scene three forward slash four for three four by clicking that playhead, it changes the global time signature to three four. Now that does not change the way it's gonna play back. So for example, even though I changed the time signature to three four, we're still gonna hear the loop in four four. Yeah, so even though the metronome is in three four, we're still hearing that loop in four four. But what it does change in addition to the metronome is when you add new clips, 
For example, double clicking this MIDI track, it's going to add a clip, which is going to default now to the new time signature, 3-4. So that's useful for when you're looping, right? So if you can just change the global time signature when you add a clip, it's going to automatically be in different bars based on the new time signature. So that's very handy. And now, if let's say we wanted to have a clip or even a scene that does two of these global changes, right? So it changes the time signature and the tempo, right? We can do that by adding a semicolon into there. So for example, if I were to go right here, rename, go to 110 BPM, and then I will hit semicolon, and then I'll add in the new time signature I want, let's say 5-4, boom. Clicking on here, it's going to change the tempo, where I designate there, and then the time signature to where I designate over there. Now this is kind of similar to what we'll see later in CliffX Pro called Action Lists, where you're adding a semicolon, you'll have different things kind of taking action at the same time. In addition to writing in your BPMs and your time signature, you can also just, just give simple notes for like your section heads or for where you are in the song. For example, if I wanted this 4-4 four, four as my chorus, I can just go to here, label this as my chorus, and it's still gonna do the function of changing the time signature to 4-4. Four, four. Over here, I want this to be my verse. You can add little, I'll call it identifiers. We'll talk more about that when we get into CliffX. That is just really gonna kind of show you where you are to help you out if you're using this, you know, bringing session view on stage. All right, let's just do kind of one more change here. We have this uh, scene set to change to 7-8, which goes along with this drum loop, which is in 7-8. Right, but not matching with the metronome right now, so we should have this uh, scene launch change the global time signature as well as bring that tempo way down to 77 beats per minute. All right, so we initiate that. All right, we see that both those changes have been made. I hope this helped to give you a brief introduction to some ways you can really grab control of Ableton Live. There will be much more coming in upcoming videos where I discuss how to get you started with CliffX Pro and how to build a very expressive live looping rig.